I want to talk about the 2004 USS Nimitz Tic Tac UFO encounter. This is the aircraft carrier here, the USS Nimitz. We, we've all heard about this. The report came out in 2017. I want to make the case that this is not the only time that these Tic Tac shaped UFOs have been seen. They've been seen a lot longer than that, but it's not talked about. They only talk about this 2004 encounter. I found within the Autobahner reports from Pennsylvania, March 1967, an identical Tic Tac that also had these prongs on them. Because if you talk, if you uh, listen to the eyewitness report, who's the F-18 pilot, uh, Commander Fravor, he talks about how the high definition videotape footage shows these protrusions or prongs coming off the craft. This thing predates it. It's in 1967. It has the same shape and these same prongs coming off it. This is back in 1967. Here's my drawing of what this thing looked like. Now this thing, according to the eyewitness, was fastened by rivets surrounding the outer circumference of this kind of like tic-tac shaped UFO back in 1967. Uh, here's a rendering I did of what this looked like and you can see these prongs here. Now I wanna talk about Gordon Cooper, astronaut Gordon Cooper. Now, if we can't trust our airline pilots and fighter pilots and astronauts when they tell us that they've seen these things, who can we trust? We gotta trust somebody, right? Uh, astronaut Gordon Cooper UFO related events. Number one, wrote a personal letter to the United Nations regarding UFOs in 1978. It's a fact, we know that. Number two, attempted UFO intercept over West Germany in 1951. Yeah, we know that too. Number three, he was involved in a UFO landing case at Edwards Air Force Base in 1957. That also happened too. All of this is talked about in his book, Leap of Faith, where he discusses these encounters at great length. So I wanna go ahead and fast forward to his uh, first encounter. This is in 1951 at his uh, West Germany Air Base. For two consecutive weeks, the meteorologist at his West German Air Base had told the airmen that these fleets of UFOs were flying the, over the airbase. By the second week this happened, Gordon Cooper went to his wingmen and said, you know what, we need to find out what these things are. So they climbed in their F-86, they got about a 60 degree angle of attack, they reached the altitude of where these disc craft were, but there was no way they could do any type of intercept because these things could turn on the dime, they could make these right angle turns at high Gs. They could back up in flight. And there's just nothing they could do to actually affect an intercept. So this is back in 1951. Who, ladies and gentlemen, is building and flying these craft in 1951 that can outpace our best performing jet fighter aircraft back in 1951? We need to find that answer. Then later in 1957, when a group of men were setting up photography equipment. They were recording the installation of precision high speed landing equipment. That's what they were doing at the time. There was a, about a 30 foot diameter dish shaped craft that came down over the dry lake bed. It hovered over the dry lake bed. It retracted these landing gear legs. It stayed on the dry lake bed for 60 seconds, hovered back up, then this landing gear assembly retracted into the bottom of the craft and then this thing flew away. And ladies and gentlemen, they got it all on film. <laughs> they got it all on film. Gordon Cooper, he developed the film. He saw the film, it was very good quality. There was an Air Force courier that we believe came in from Andrews Air Force Base. That film was put into a pouch. It was basically handcuffed to his wrist and then we believe it was sent to either Andrews Air Force Base or New Mexico, Air Force OSI, somewhere in New Mexico it was stationed. And it's probably sitting with probably hundreds or thousands of other gun camera footage, color footage, black and white, uh, eight by 10 glossies. They've probably got evidence. There's probably more than one warehouse where they keep this evidence. Where is this being stored? Where is this? videotape footage. We need to find that. We need to find this physical evidence. And in only that way will we move ufology forward, really. 
Where is the film now? Is it in a vault? Is it in a, a secret vault somewhere below the Pentagon? We've got reports that there's a vault there where they keep these photographs. They probably got more than one because you know for a fact that they don't operate on single point failure. So they're gonna spread it out at multiple facilities around the country. Uh, I wanna talk about Cooper's Treasure. This is a couple of years ago, there was a, a TV program called Cooper's Treasure that talked about a treasure map. This was a space-based treasure map that Gordon Cooper flew during his Mercury orbits around the planet, during his Mercury space flight uh, orbits. And uh, this is Daryl Miklos interview I did with him back in 2019, where I interviewed him on camera. He was the best friend of Gordon Cooper before he passed away. And Gordon told him some shocking things that I kind of want to review here. Following information represents secondhand dead man's testimony from Gordon Cooper, but that doesn't mean it's not true. So I just want to point that out. It's secondhand dead man's testimony. According to Gordon Cooper, quote, one day the decades long government UFO cover up will come back to haunt them. <laughs> this is from Daryl Miklos, who was his good friend just before he passed away. Statements from Gordon Cooper, number one. UFO crash retrievals are real. Number two, an elaborate program to reverse engineer the technology has been ongoing. Number three, alien bodies were recovered, some still alive. Number four, he did visit Area 51. Number five, a massive network of underground tunnels have been developed since the Truman administration. Number six, there are installations on the moon, according to Gordon Cooper. Uh, the Truman Reconstruction, this is the White House 1949 to 1952. So the White House we know of today, ladies and gentlemen, is not the White House that was existing in the Truman years. You can see on the right, they gutted the entire White House down to its rafters and beams. That, that's it. They gutted the entire thing and they redid the whole thing. And this is to begin the continuity of government program. That's where it really kicked off. So going back on what Gordon Cooper said, and I've got an auto binder report. What did our Apollo astronauts see while circling the moon? In the past, many moon mysteries were seen by astronomers, such as the 2000 lights in the Mary Chrysium between 1869 and 1871. Were they landing lights at a UFO moon base? Here's another one. Did our Apollo astronauts observe any coded light flashes on the moon? Back in 1873, so many blinking lights were observed at various craters that the Royal Astronomical Society of Britain said they might be aliens trying to signal Earth. This is back in 1873. We'll do another one here. Perhaps our moon circling Apollo astronauts spied a vast fleet of UFOs. 1777, 1836, 1860, 1874, astronomer, astronomers saw flocks of black, black dots crossing the full moon's face. Were they fleets of UFOs going from the lunar uh, flying saucer base to another? In 1836, this is going on. Uh, humans first landed on Mars in 1883. This is from Gordon Cooper. He said we were there in 1883. They didn't use liquid rockets and it didn't take nine months to get there. According to Gordon Cooper, the way they did it was highlighted in the movie, The Abyss. It's the biomedical advancement technology that they use to get there. And they use what's called a rebreather. If you've seen the movie, The Abyss, this was developed in the, in the 1970s and Gordon Cooper was a part of it. That's how they made it to Mars. I can't prove it, right? Obviously, I can't prove it, but this is according to Gordon Cooper. He also said that, quote, we are 100 years behind where we should be, technologically speaking, according to Gordon Cooper. We're 100 years behind where we should be. He asked the question, not me. He asked the question, why are we still building square houses by pounding nails in the wooden boards? We've been doing this for like 200 years and over. We're still building these houses out of pounding nails into boards. <laughs> it does sound a little arcane, right? He also talked about the shipping and trucking industry, power generating industry, oil petroleum industry, that these are dinosaur old technologies. You've got these smoggy smokestacks and all this emissions being emitted. 
the, you know, the, the trucking industry, it's an arcane industry. He also said there is an 85% reduction in efficiency when transferring electrical electricity through power lines. You know, why, why can't we transfer power wirelessly, right? Uh, if we can transfer a cell signal from one phone to another wirelessly, why can't we do the same with electricity? Uh, and then I want to point out that this is not a Tesla. This is a Musk, right? This is developed on Elon Musk. A true Tesla would have no power cord to plug in and would draw electricity from the air wirelessly. That's what Gordon Cooper is talking about. That's what he's talking about. CAT, Center for Advanced Technology, primary goal to develop revolutionary technology that can be integrated into the public sector. So he was part of this Center for Advanced Technology called CAT. And how do you secretly reveal the truth? You hide it in plain sight, according to Gordon Cooper. How did they do it? Uh, they did it through EPCOT, Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. That's what EPCOT stands for. And that's how he actually, uh, he was involved in the beginning part of EPCOT. 